Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the brand new Azure markers from Royal and Langnickel. They're just starting to hit stores now and I'm gonna be giving away 10 sets of these. I'll be giving away five sets on my blog and five sets on my Instagram page and I am at Lindsay Wyrick on Instagram. So um, make sure you sign up to win in both of those places to double your chances. And um, these are really, uh, really kind of special. They're really juicy. Um, they are high quality artist markers and they're not crazy expensive. They come in packs of um, 13 and the packs of 13 give you 12 colors and a blender and they are put together in specific like groupings like this is a complexion grouping if you want markers to color skin tones. Um, there's forest and spring and then the basics which would be like your really bright saturated colors and seashore which are a kind of cool and earthy and then they've got the um, seven packs which again give you six colors and one blender um, and the clear blenders are nice it's nice to have some extras so if you do get a couple sets um, that's not a bad thing and the price on these the um the 13 packs are $24.99 and the seven packs are I believe $14.99 or $13.99. They're right in that ballpark. That and that's a regular price. So of course, you know, stores have sales and whatnot. But that's, you know, the that is the suggested retail price. So there's warm grays and there's stone, which is another earth tone set. Um, cool uh, uh, gray scale, which have your cool grays. Um, then you've got uh, shoot, I cut the name off that one. <laughs> Oh, just called Hue, actually. Um, opulent, which is more of your kind of richer muted colors. And there's pastels, which I recommend starting off with pastel colors when you're going to, because if you're getting into markers, because you can always layer to get more saturated colors. But once you've got the really bright ones, there's not much you can do to take them down. You can lighten them with a blender, but it's the darker colors are harder to work with. It's easier to work with um, softer ones. So um, there's some really beautiful colors here. There are some duplicates between sets. So one set might have you know FT10 and another set might as well so just to let you know if you are you know picking these up in store to you know look at the colors that are included so you don't end up getting sets with doubles if that's not your intention and just to give you a look at what the colors really look like because I don't trust the colors on the caps with alcohol markers I always want to swatch them on marker paper to get a good idea um, so this is what the full range will look like and since I have all the sets I made little notes of how many of each marker I had um, so you can see some of the those that have like a little circle next to them have um, you know the, the markers in a couple different sets so that's a basic overview let's take a look at the marker itself it's got a triangular barrel the caps are easy to come off they've got little grips on them which makes it easy you've got a chisel nib which is very similar to the chisel nib in Copics and most of your um, comparable art markers and then you've got a bullet nib which is very similar to the bullet nibs that come in your art markers a little bit finer than like say a sharpie or a Bic market um, but it's pretty much the same as like what your Prismacolor um, Spectrum Noir um, Pro marker the same like bullet nib that those would have they're very low odor, but if you take a whiff, you can smell a faint alcohol smell. I'd say it's probably about the similar to like to Prismacolor or Copics, um, but there, you know, there is a very, very faint alcohol smell and um, they blend pretty well. Now, the only downside here uh, for some folks is going to be that there's no brush nib. They're a bullet and a chisel nib. Um, and, you know, that's that's pretty typical for markers that are in this price range. They're comfortable. They don't roll off because they're a triangular barrel and I find the caps are easy to snap on tight and easy to remove off. Some markers are hard to get the caps off and I just like to make a note of that. For most people it wouldn't be an issue but if you have arthritis or any other strength issue that could be a problem. Um, so the samples that I've worked up today um, we're going to be coloring this colorway together and I'm going to show you how to stencil with the markers too because that's kind of a fun technique that I recently well actually today <laughs> discovered and um, and I really didn't realize how easy it was to do with these markers. Um, so you can see kind of how easily they blend. This one I wanted to see kind of across the rainbow of colors how well they blended and that worked really well too. And um, this I was just fooling around with the stenciling aspect. I did the stenciling in the background here with with the markers and this stencil and it was just kind of fun. But this is kind of a crazy hot mess because it's just I was trying to do rainbow roses you know like you see um, the trend but uh, I didn't really care for how how they ended up looking on my card but you know it was still a pretty fun card to uh, to put together. 
So we're gonna work on this. I want to keep it simple. The um, the process is the same no matter what colors you want to do, but I'm gonna be using uh, Coral Red 5 and Red 4. And that's why I recommend you swatch your colors out no matter what brand of marker you use because the cat the color on the marker on your paper is gonna be different than what the cap says. In fact, even the color on Nina cardstock is gonna be different than what it is on the Royal and Line Nickel. Um, marker paper. So you want to swatch it out on the paper that you're most likely to use. Uh, so I'm going to show you two different ways that I like to do um, marker coloring. Now if I'm in a small area like that, I'm going to zoom in. When I'm in a small area, I work a little bit differently and I'm just going to set these here so you can see what colors I am using. Um, I have more time. Now reds and purples are difficult colors to blend, so you only really want to do this if you have a small area to blend into. And I'm going to go in with my red 4 and put it in my shadow on this little petal, and then I'm going to very quickly go in with my coral and color over that red and fill in the area. And that's going to give me a very simple blend, and that works fine if you're in a small area because there, you know, your ink isn't setting before you get a chance to blend it. Now, when I have a large area like this, I'm going to do it a little differently. When I have a large area like this, I am going to color everything in with my lightest color first, except I am going to leave out my high, my brightest highlight areas. So I am coloring to about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now I'm going to go in with my dark color. Now notice there's a big jump between these two colors. These are not right next to each other like on a color chart. There would be, you know, this is probably like a value six or seven and the coral is probably like a value two. So you generally would want to be closer together. But by doing this method, I can make big jumps. So now I'm going to color right over that with my coral marker and that's going to help spread out that ink. And I'm going to pull it a little bit further out to the edge. I want my shadow a little bit darker, so I'm going to go back in with my red 4 and intensify that a little bit. And now I'm going to go over and spread that out. And once I'm pretty happy with the values of colors that I have there, I can bring the color out to the edge. I just don't want to saturate that edge because I want it to be a little bit lighter. If I decide that I want just a little bit of dark, I can go in there and, you know, not blend it out because there is enough um, ink on the paper that it's going to kind of soften it. So that's how I'd work with a bigger petal, working with colors that don't blend is easily. Greens blend pretty well. So when I'm using green, I like to use that method that I used to begin with, especially on a petal that's not too big. So I go in first with my darker color and I'd get you know, wherever I wanted my dark, usually where something is overlapping something else. And I tend to leave the edges a little bit lighter. Then I'd go in with my lighter color and I would just color over that and pull the color out. You can see that works pretty well and I get a pretty nice blend. On this leaf here, it's a little bit bigger. I can do that same technique I showed you with that first petal and I can color everything in except for like maybe the brightest highlights with my green. Go in with my darker color. Get right next to that petal there so I have that nice shadow. And then go back in and blend it out with my um, with my lighter green because again we have a big jump here. When you're starting out in markers, you're not going to have every color out there you be, unless you have a humongous budget. So knowing how to work with colors that aren't right next to each other on the color wheel is super helpful. So the next thing I want to show you is um, how to do that stenciling technique. Now the first thing I want to color is the inside of this vase like I did on my sample card. You can see I've got a very, very soft look to that water in the vase. So um, the stamps I'm using are these cling stamps from Stampendous and they do have dies that match if you like to buy dies that match your stamps. Um, but the thing that's neat about these stamps is they come with free stencils or masks as you know, you'd typically call them. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to take off the little um, vase mask here and I'm going to use the, um, the negative spot here. 
And then I'm just going to lay a piece of like packaging over that so I don't overspray. And then I'm going to use this tool here, which is, it's a, it's a called a color spritzer and Stampin' Up! used to make these um, many years ago. So if you have one from back then, it will work. Or you can buy these from Ranger. They recently re-released them. And there's a little collar that you can take out of there. Um, I don't know what I did. Oh, here's mine. So it will come with this thing in there already for like skinnier markers. So you just pull that out. And then what you want to do is insert your marker and you want to insert it so the chisel edge is coming through, which is what uh, the end you don't really use that much anyway when you're marker coloring. And you want to let it extend the uh, kind of blow hole there a little bit. And then you're going to tighten up the little nut on the top of the uh, barrel here. It's a little awkward to do. And basically what you want is you want the uh, the tips to be touching like that. And then you just want to mask off your area here and then just you can spray on a very fine mist of color. Now this blue is a pretty dark one, but you can see when you spray it, it's, it's very light. I think I'll try another shade of blue as well, something a little bit softer. Maybe this blue four might be nice. And again, we want our chisel end. We're going to put that through with the chisel point meeting up with the tip of that. And if you don't, if you don't seem to get any um, spray coming through, then you probably just need to uh, adjust it, like maybe have the tip come out a little bit further. Now I want the waterline to be a little darker, so I've got a piece of masking tape here, and I stuck this to my sweatshirt a couple times so that it would pick up some lint and it wouldn't be super sticky. And I'm just going to set that down, and I'm going to go back over. And this way I'll get a little bit more blue in the area that would actually have the water in it. All right, and we'll remove our masks. And see, so now I've got the vase colored. It's a super soft, subtle color, um, but it looks really nice. And the next thing I want to do is show you how to do a background. First, I'm going to stick the stencil down, uh, this mask down and I'm just gonna put a little shadow on the table and I'm gonna do that. Actually, I use some of this blue first because a lot of times if you've got a, if you have a, um, like a, whatchamacallit, a vase with water, it will cast a little bit of color, the color of the vase. Now this is not as perfect as you'd get with an airbrush or an airbrush system, but it is inexpensive. These things cost about, I don't know, I think I paid, maybe $10 for it. It's not very expensive and it doesn't require air cans or electricity or anything like that. And I'm just going to give that a little bit of gray under there just for a little shadow. And that will also give a little visual weight to the bottom of the card. There we go. So now I'm going to put these other pieces of the stencil um, over my image to protect it so I can stencil in the background. Um, and I recommend that once you use these stencils, um, if you get one of these stamp sets, or even if you stamp on a post-it note and you cut your own masks, um, which I do for a lot of my stencils, I keep the um, those pieces with my stamp sets so that I can... Um, I can use them over and over again. So I tape these right back onto the the sheet that they came on. That way I don't lose any. And I'm just kind of piecing these little stencils together and then sticking them down so I don't lose anything. I'm going to finish that up because it's going to be tedious to watch and uh, then we'll come back into our stenciling. Because the stencil for this flower was going to hang off into the background, I need to make a custom mask for this. And so this was this is what you do if you had any other stamp that didn't have a stencil, you would just make your own. So what you do is you just ink up your stamp and stamp it on a sticky note. I'm just going to try to get as much of it onto the sticky part as I can. And then you just cut it out with scissors. And then to use that mask, you would just, um, after I cut it out, you would just stick that down. And I'll save that. What I'll do is I'll just um, put this in with that stamp set so that I'll have it for the next time I need it because probably there'll be situations where that will happen because this one is, is uh, 
the stencil that came with this is in two parts so that you could like mask out the pink or the green if you wanted to. So I really like that that company does that. Um, it's just, and that's how you use those if you get that. So um, I hope that hasn't confused you more than anything. I feel like I'm saying all kinds of words and I don't know if they make sense. <laughs> but anyway, we got all of everything we colored all fancy is protected. That's that's what we're getting at here I could have said that ten minutes ago probably all right So I want to do a two-tone background. I'm gonna try this yellow green six um, Because it's it's kind of close to that color, but it's a little bit more grayed down um, And that is going to go in my little contraption here And I just want to give this kind of like an all-over tone. So I'm holding it up higher from the um, uh, from the paper than I did when I was trying to get like a more uh, centralized color and I'm just squirting on a very like kind of soft blush of color just want to give it like a just kind of like a soft yellow green background now this is a great way to do a one layer card you could totally you could even like mask this down like tape it down so that you leave like an eighth of an inch border on each side do this as a one layer card and it will be so pretty and just such a easy nice way to uh to make a simple card and now i think i'm going to use let's try this blue four i can't remember if i already used that you know what i think i already used that let's do a brighter blue let's try blue 10 that's a nice vivid blue but i think once we air spray it it's not going to be super bright and you could always test this oh you know what i want to do before i do that i want to put my my stencil down or because that, that's the whole point of this i'm just laying an all over pattern stencil down on my paper and i am going to tape it down to the background like to the my stamping mat because i don't want i don't want to cover up any of the holes that are on the um that are on the paper because i want all those holes to get this color but i also um, don't want my stencil to shift while i'm working so i'm just gonna work my way around and just blast color now you don't have to worry about the focal object because remember we masked all that off so that's being protected and um actually the nice thing about this permanent marker ink is that I'll be able to see my stencils because I I'm always afraid I'm going to lose the clear ones that come with my stampenda stamps so that'll be nice all right so we can take our stencil off and see what we have isn't that pretty now any place where my stencil was kind of high like if it was if it had lifted up you I'll get like a less crisp image and any place where my stencil touched I would get a crisper image uh, but all in all, I think it looks pretty awesome. So that's pretty good for a one layer card. Hopefully that shows up really well. Um, sometimes reds don't photograph as well as other colors, but you can see I got a nice blend. And, um, you know, you can always go in and add some more. Like if I decided that I wish I had some more, um, like, I don't know, like I wanted a little bit more color in the vase, I can go in with my marker and I can color some in. And because I have that base down there already, it's not going to feel you know it's not going to look too streaky or anything because that's where like i think the the da if there's any downside to these markers the downside would be that there isn't a um there isn't a lot of really cool really lightweight light light saturated colors are all pretty dark so that can be difficult if you you know if you wanted to blend out to white or anything so um, by using the stenciling technique and the poor man's airbrush technique, you can really get a lot of versatility there. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Don't forget to go over to my blog, leave a comment on this, the post showing off these projects for a chance to win a your choice of a set of these markers. There's uh, many to choose from. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I want to show you again this stenciling in the background here. I really thought it was fun with that kind of fish scale stencil. And um, that, this one is just using different, you know, like a two purples and two blues and two teals and two greens just to see what the color combinations look like. Um, it's a lot of fun. I hope you give it a try. And I hope you sign up to win both on my blog and on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like giveaways on YouTube. And until next time, happy crafting.